We talked about words are like seeds because they work the same way seeds work. Yeah? And if words work, and they do, we must be careful of what we say. Hmm? So we don't say the wrong things. Because if we say the wrong things, then we're going to get the wrong results. Are we agreeing? Are we agreeing? We got, we got to agree. All right? If we say the wrong things, we will not get the right results. And God is, God is amazing in the way he deals with us. It's amazing. I want you to get a revelation this morning. God will not give you anything you don't want. He will wait until you want it. He'll wait for you. Until you come to the place where you say, yes, Lord. Until you say, I surrender all. And he will wait for you. Hmm? No matter how good it is. No matter, no matter how it will change your life. Huh? If you don't want it, you won't get it. If you don't want it, you won't get it. I want us to go to 2 Kings chapter 6. And I want us to look at this text because in it, there are lessons we can learn to apply to our lives today. Today. You can start this next leg of your journey to success today. You can start another level of prosperity today. Today. In 2 Kings chapter 6, the king of Syria came up against Samaria and surrounded the city. It's what they were called. They besieged the city. So when a city is besieged, the enemy surrounds the city. So you can't, no one can go in and no one can leave the city. So if you're in, you're in. And if you're out, you're out. And so Samaria was surrounded by the armies of Syria. And because nothing can come out and Nothing can go, there's no trade. And it was a strategy of the enemy. Because the enemy knows that at some point, you're going to run out of stuff. Because there's a law that it doesn't matter who you are. It governs the earth. If you keep taking without putting in, at some point, it's going to run out. You don't need an accountant for that. You, you don't need to have gone to college for that. Nature itself teaches us that. If you want to be able to continuously receive from something, you've got to put into it. Tell anybody you've got to put into it. Come on, tell anybody you've got to invest in it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You've you, you, you got a gift to it. Ah, 
Am I talking to anybody already? You, 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 you gotta, you gotta help it. You gotta support it. My God, you gotta, you gotta protect it. I, I feel the Holy Ghost already. Hallelujah. You, you gotta, you gotta guard it. Hallelujah. Because it's not just you who want it. Others want it too. Ah, this is for somebody. You, you, you. If you, if you, if you want to be able to have that available to you and serve you, you have to find ways to serve it. You got you to gotta serve it. Hallelujah. And so it's a strategy of the enemy to call, ah, let me go, oh, this is fresh. My God. Listen to me. It's a strategy of the enemy to get you to only take and not give. It is a strategy of the enemy to get you to only receive and never return the favor. Never reciprocate. It is a, listen to me, it's not a blessing. It is a strategy of the enemy. It's, a, it's not a blessing. It's a strategy of the enemy. And that's the strategy the enemy employed against Samaria. And the result was a great famine. Somebody say a great famine. Lack of food. Let me tell you something about food. Food is powerful. Many of you experienced the power of food this week. It overpowered you. Talk to me. Let, let's speak the truth and shame the devil. Food is powerful. It will speak to you. It will make you buckle. It will make you weak. It will make you stand up in that kitchen and cry because you're on a fast. And, 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 and it's not 6 o'clock as yet. And it's 5.45 p.m. And you're standing there. And that food will maneuver you. It's powerful. It's powerful. <laughs> powerful. It will send you into what we will call a tizzic. I'm telling you. It happened to me this week. Can I speak? It happened to me this week. I had to literally do warfare. I had to literally take myself out the kitchen. I had to literally distract myself. I had to literally put my mind in something. I was about to break the fast. Food is powerful. And when people need food, they will do all kinds of things for it. Why? Because it's a necessity. We cannot survive without it. Can't survive without it. So in, in the scripture, here's the thing. The living Bible says, as a result, there was in verse 24 and 25, as a res, verse 25, as a result, there was a great famine in the city. And after a long while, even a donkey's head sold for fifty dollars. People were buying donkey's head, something that had it not been for the fast, they would never even think about. They would not even think about it. Much more to eat it. But there was a famine. Tell your neighbor, there was a famine. There was a lack. There was a need, a great need for, 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 for appetites to be satisfied. Can I talk to somebody? Hallelujah. Glory to God. There was a great desire within the people in the city. And let me tell you something about stuff. Whenever there's a famine, it is not everyone that's suffering. Trust me. While some people are dying, 
others are wasting food. Let me tell you one of the problems we have in our world today. And there are many nations where, 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 where children and entire families, listen to me, they're experiencing abject poverty. And it's not because those nations don't have. But those with the power to distribute <laughs> secures themselves and their children. They fill their pockets huh? while others are dying. Hmm? May that never be your portion. Here's the thing. So, a donkey's head was sold for $50. People were just cutting off the donkey's head and selling. <laughs> Here's the other part. A pint of dove's dung brought $3. That's how bad it was. People were eating dove's mess. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you are not poor. So don't say it. I'm talking about prophetic decrees. You are rich. Yes. You are blessed. Yes. Listen. We watch too much TV. Glory to God. And housewives of Atlanta. And 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 what 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 we what we do is when we see the spread, when we see the crib, when we see it, you know, you know, when we see it, we look at our apartments and we say we're nothing. Yeah, yeah. We begin to speak like the ten spies who saw the land, who saw the good land, who saw the giants, and said we are like grasshoppers. What you say. will determine what you get in life. You got to start seeing yourself as a champion. You got to start seeing yourself as an overcomer. In other words, when you start seeing yourself and you start telling yourself, I am an overcomer, it does not matter what the challenge is, you are going to step over it. You are going to overcome it. You are going to rise above it because that's just who you are. People were eating donkey's head and dove's dung. And you thought that was bad? It got worse. Because the longer they're surrounded by the enemy, the worst things became. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. The Bible says you must resist the devil. Do not allow the enemy to take up any real estate close to you. From verse 26, one day the king of Israel was walking along the wall of the city. A woman called out to him, help my lord the king. If the lord doesn't help you, what can I do? He retorted. I have neither food nor wine to give you. However, what is the matter? She replied, this woman proposed that we will eat my son one day and her son the next. So we boiled my son and ate him. 
this is not a parable. This is not a parable. The next time you allow your mind to tell you that you have nothing, the next time you allow your mind to tell you that you are so at the bottom of the scale, at the bottom of the ladder, you need to rebuke yourself. You need to rebuke yourself. You know, we, I grew up in the Caribbean. Tobago, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful island. <laughs> I mean, beautiful. I mean, the people are just amazing, warm, warm people. Everybody will, every Trinidadian will tell you that about Tobagonian. <laughs> They're warm and friendly. Huh? It's true. Is it true? That's what Trinidadians say about Tobagonians. That's why they come up every weekend. What do you think? What, what do you think they leave Trinidad and come up to Tobago for? Hey. We're warm, we're sweet, we're delicious people. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And so we grew up poor. Yeah? But when you are from an island like Tobago, there really isn't anything like poor. You know why? You have mango tree. You have chenet tree. You have guavas. You have sugar apple. You have pomerac. You have plums. You have cane. You have... Uh, the sea, the beach, you can go down every morning and get fish. On your way home from the beach, you pick a Hana banana from somebody, banana tree. And you, food. It's all around you. So, 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 we, we may not have, like, money, but we can eat. And you had a roof over your head. And you had family. You had community. You had all the other kids in the village that you went and you played with. And you came home and you ate. Yeah, and, and your father uh, uh, worked the garden or your mother worked the garden. And so they would bring home whatever the garden produced in that season. And that's what you ate. And you were happy. And if you had goat, like Pastor C, you had goat milk. Listen. Yeah. Listen, so here's the thing, here's the thing. We don't know what famine is. We never experienced famine. Dry season, yes, but not famine. Are you with me? In our lifetimes, may we never, ever experience a famine. Listen, listen to me. When it comes to the point where a mother has to eat a baby, her own baby, and for survival, when, when the situation turns you into a cannibal, it's bad. And the Bible even tells us that we should not behave as cannibals with one another. We should not devour. Do not destroy each other. Can I go deeper? Do not eat your brother or your sister for dinner. Let them live. Let them thrive. Let them prosper. Let them grow. Let that be your desire for them. Hallelujah. That they will live out their lives in prosperity. Do not devour your brother or sister for dinner. So the woman said to the king, I ate my son 
she is my son. And now it's her turn to kill her son, to boil her son, so we can eat again. And she refuses. When the king heard it, when the king heard it, the Bible says he read his clothes. And the people saw that he had ashes on him. In other words, he was mourning. He was fasting. He was believing God for a miracle. I want to announce to somebody that though you may never ever get to this place, but sometimes we feel as if we are in this place. But here's the good news. The greater the trouble, the greater the miracle. The greater, listen, the greater the pain, the greater the breakthrough. There's a saying we say, the hotter the battle, the sweeter the victory. Listen to me. When things get really, really hard, when it gets really, really tough, and you feel like you're coming to your breaking point, I want you to remember this word, that when you come to your breaking point, it is the time for your breakthrough. I say when things begin to break up, you must recognize that you have come to the place of divine breakthrough. That's when God will break through for you. Come on, give God a praise. If you believe it, I say God is going to break through for you. Glory to Jesus. Your breaking point is not where you break down. It's where God breaks through for you. And that's when you've got to begin to declare it. I'm coming to it. Where you begin, when things begin to break down, you begin to declare your break, your breakthrough. Listen to me. And the harder it is, the harder you declare it. Are you with me? Glory to Jesus. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you're not going to break down, but you're going to break through. Glory to God. You're not going to break down, you're going to break through. Here's the thing. The situation was so bad. The king said, if Elisha, the prophet, <laughs> does not fix this situation, he's going to be a dead man. I'll kill him. Now, what does this have to do with Elisha? Why is Elisha now being blamed for the famine? If we go back to 2 Kings 6, we'll see another story there where some of the soldiers from Aram came into Samaria and they caught them. The king wanted to kill them. Elisha said, don't kill them, feed them and send them on their way. Yeah? I don't know if that's why the king now wants to kill the prophet. Because now the same nation that he freed the soldiers huh, has now surrounded them and is causing great harm. Listen, listen, listen to me. That's, that's so typical of humans. It is so human. Whenever something bad happens, we forget good. We forget all the good. It was a good thing the prophet did. Suddenly, because the prophet did a good thing, and a bad thing happens, the prophet gets blamed. Hmm? The prophet is not, the life of the prophet is now in danger. He threatens to kill the prophet. Tell anybody, don't kill the prophet. Come on, tell him, don't blame the prophet. Blame the prophet. Hallelujah. A lot of times, we create our own problems. We create our own problems. And when we are hit with the results, we blame someone else. We look for every other person to blame. We blame the 
church. We blame the apostle. We blame the prophet. Listen, it is so typical of the world and the way the world system operates. So here's, I'm, 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 all that was my introduction. The, 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 the king says to the prophet, you know, you know, you know, it's like, you know, when, 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 when a dis natural disaster comes, yeah, suddenly people blame the church. What? 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 You, what? what I'm, I'm, I'm always amazed by that. It amazes me. Yeah? They blame the church. If, if the government, if the government mismanages the, the, the money, they blame the church. If, if the government don't provide educational systems and, and stuff for the people, suddenly the, it, it's the church's responsibility. Huh? The, the, church, the church spends money and builds schools. They say, why are you building schools? We need, we need uh, uh, to take care of the orphans, build, build orphanages. If you build orphanages, why you spend all that money on orphanage? We need, we need schools. Listen. People will always want to find somebody or something to blame. So the king comes to the prophet and says, Prophet, this thing has to break. And if you don't do something about this, you're dead by tomorrow. Tell your neighbor, by tomorrow this time. By tomorrow this time. Here's what, here's what the prophet said. Here's what the prophet said. King. By tomorrow this time, Samaria would be in a state of abundance. That's my paraphrasing. By tomorrow this time, every person in the city would have eaten and to the stomach's capacity with food remaining. By tomorrow, this time, what was a minus <laughs> would now become a plus, 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 plus. By tomorrow, this time, you would experience incredible, incredible favor and incredible breakthrough. By tomorrow, this time, I decree, I decree over you that what was lacking in your life will be fulfilled by tomorrow this time king matabo shikalabasa the prophet made a prophetic decree he decreed it he called it no i want you to stay with me hallelujah by tomorrow this time, by this time tomorrow, two gallons of flour or four gallons of barley grain will be sold in the markets of Samaria for a dollar. In other words, food will be washing the place for nothing. Amen. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Now, the city is besieged. Where is it coming from? Think with me. No one could go out. No one could come in. But the prophet dared against all odds to speak based on his conviction. He got a, 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 a something in his spirit that God was about to do something miraculous. He got a word in his spirit that God was about to turn that situation around. That God was about to shine light in the midst of the darkness. That God was about to supply according to his riches in glory. The prophet was able but to draw down from the realms of the spirit that enough is enough 
triumphant. Regardless of what the enemy is doing, God is going to break through and bless his people. God is going to break through and support his people. God is going to break through and lift up their heads. The prophet decreed it. What he said was unheard of. He didn't just say that there's going to be Bali again. Because that could have meant anything, anytime. He didn't just say, you're going to get flower again. Huh? He didn't just say, there's going to be food in the market again. He didn't just say, my God, ah, that you're going to experience a turnaround. He said, by this time, he locked it in. Tell you anybody, you're going to lock it in. Ah, not by whim and fancy, but when you get up, a spiritual impartation, when something quickens in your spirit, you're going to call it. Call it. Oh, I heard two people. Call it. Don't be afraid to call it. Rapakatababa. Call it. I talk to somebody. Oh, when you got a witness in your spirit that something is going to happen, you don't have to wait for it to happen to say, God told me so. Call it. Speak it forth. Decree it. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. A lot of times we get the witness, but we don't say anything. A lot of times we get the vision, but we don't say anything. A lot of times we hear the word, but we don't say anything. Because we have a waiting mentality. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Sometimes, in fact, once you get a witness in your spirit, ah, that God is going to move you need to open up your mouth and say, Thus saith the Lord, for I hear the Lord. Oh, I behold, oh, I see that this, that, that is going to happen. Ah, you're going to come out of it in the next two days. Oh, Shapaka, in the next two days, that pain in your back will disappear. The next year, this time, you will be holding a baby in your hand called the word call it call it call it next year this time you're gonna be walking down the aisle hey capo shut up you don't have to wait i'm gonna preach up you don't have to wait up for anybody to prophesy that to you you need to know how to prophesy to yourself Two years from now, I'm going to be having my own business according to the word of the Lord. A year and a half from now, I'm going to be married. I feel a witness in my spirit. Ah, next year this time, I'm going to have my own house. I'm talking to somebody. Hey! Hey! When the prophet declared the word by this time tomorrow, the servant who was leaning, who the king leaned on, said to the prophet, Prophet, that's impossible. That was the wrong response. And because he said it, what happened? The prophet said, "You and I'm paraphrasing. You think this is not going to happen? You will see it happen, but you'll not one not one ounce of flour will come to your lips. You, you, you will you will you will not partake of this word that I have spoken because you rejected it. You will not partake of this word that I've spoken because you did not come into agreement with it. You will not partake of." word that I have spoken because you did not sow into it. You will not partake of this word that I have spoken because you did not believe it. Yeah. 
It looked as if the prophet had taken his faith a little too far, huh? But the prophet spoke it anyhow. When it comes to making prophetic decrees, once you feel inspired by the Holy Ghost, you say it. Listen to me. It is your job to say it. And it is God's job to do it. Are you with me? Are you with me? It is your job to speak it. And it is God's job to bring it to pass. But I've come to announce to somebody. Ah, God is waiting on you to speak it. So that he can... Oh, Cabo. The, uh, uh, let me say this. Let me say this. The spiritual realm gets activated by the words you speak. The spiritual realm gets activated by the words you speak. God, God will move based on the words you speak. Over and over in scripture, I want you to get it. Listen, listen. When God speaks, when the prophet speaks, what you have to understand how words work. Tell anybody about words work. And there's a way, there's a there's a a, 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 a process, there's a there's a there's a, a formula, there's a there's a, a system. Yeah? When you release words, yeah, they go through a system to get so that you get the desired results whether they are good words or bad words yeah. you gotta get that every single word that comes from your mouth it goes through a process hallelujah and you get the results or you get the fruit or the harvest of it hallelujah here's the thing the 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 servant he didn't have to say anything, you know. He was out of order. Stay in your lane. The Elisha is speaking to the king, bro. Listen. All, you, all he should have done was say, Amen. 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 Man of God. Amen. Prophet. Prophesy. Agree and say amen. amen. No, but he began to analyze. And, 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 then, and then had the audacity to say to the prophet. Even if God opens the sky. And lets out flour and barley and grains and oil and wine and sugar and, 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 and corn and lentils. If God were to open the sky and just start raining food down, it still is not possible. What you say, it's just not possible. Well, it tells you how much he knows about God. huh? It tells you that, that, that he, 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 he does not have much knowledge of what God can do. Do we have anybody in the house that you understand that there is absolutely nothing that is impossible with God? God created the heavens and the earth and the firmament. He created the moon, the sun, and the stars, and he created them all from the invisible nothing that is created was created from what was seen but from what was unseen are you in the house he's more than able when you when 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 there's a prophetic word you don't say it's impossible Let me correct this in the house. 
Let me correct it in the house. Many times, prophetic words come to you and I watch your response. It's not good. It's not good. Because one of the worst places you could be in your life is to be in the place where God doesn't want you to be. Because a lot of times when prophetic word comes, and prophetic words say you're going to get a husband, you start shaking your head. No, you don't want no husband. What's your problem? Uh, prophetic word comes. Uh, oh, you're going to have a baby. No, 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 no. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. What's your problem? Prophetic word comes. Oh, you're, you're going to be married by this time next year. And, and in your heart, you're saying, I resist it, I resist it, I resist it, I resist it. Hands in the air. Impossible. It's not going to happen. Not for me, not for me, not for me. And you, you don't receive it. You don't say amen. Amen, prophet. Prophesy, prophet. And I'm going to tell you how you should receive prophetic words. I'm going to tell you in a minute. Glory to Jesus. Because if it is what God wants for you, why don't you want it? Hey! I say, if it is what God wants for you, how could you not want it? He has your best interest at heart. He has the best for you. He means well for you. God is not against you. God is for you. How oh, dare you resist his plans for your life? Somebody say, God, whatever you have for me, I want it. Give it to me, Lee, Jesus. I want all that you have for me. Let me tell you something else about God and his promises. He does, he does, listen to me, listen to me. He does, he doesn't, he doesn't sit and analyze and say, well, no, she's too young or he's too young. Paul said something to Timothy, he said, do not let anyone despise your youth. You're not too young to walk in God. You're not too young to have what God wants you to have. You're not too young. You're not too young. You're not too young. Let me, let me, let me level the playing field. Age is not the issue with God. Young, middle age, older age, it's not an issue. It's not an item with God. Somebody lift your right hand and say, I want what God wants for me. Listen, when the situation is bad, I'm going in now, and someone prophesies good, you don't have anything to lose. Why would you say it's not going to happen? What do you have to lose by agreeing with it? What do you have to lose by saying, let it be, let it be done unto me according to your word. Lord, if you say flour is going to be in the market, let it be so. Are you a glutton for punishment? Do you want to starve a few more days? Why would you not agree? You know why? He was in the king's house. You got it, you got it, you got it. He was eating God. Because in a time of famine, it's not everyone that's suffering. The king certainly isn't suffering. The king is eating good. Because at all costs, you must preserve the king. Long live the king. Whatever you speak against will move away from you. Think about it. Whatever you speak against, will you will eventually lose it if you ever had it. And if you never had it, you will never have it. It will walk away. It will move away from you. Listen. If 
what you say can harm you in this way, then there are some things we should never ever say. Because words work. Tell anybody words work. And the king's servant said it will never happen. The prophet said, listen, it's going to happen, but it's not going to happen for you. Are you getting that? So based on what you say, things will either happen for you or not happen for you. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Then what you want is what you say. Come on, come on. I said what you want is what you say. Because, because based on what you say, things will happen or not happen. So if you know what you want to happen, then that's what you need to say. Tell anybody, just say it. One of the things I recognize about us is that we lie to ourselves too much. And, I, and I'm yet to figure it out why we do it. Maybe it's to give an impression to other people. Maybe it is to present ourselves in a good light. So people see us as whole and, well, listen to me. Listen to me. If you want it, if that's what you want, just say that's what I want. If you want a five-bedroom house, don't say, oh, man, man, man. Just say it. Because you'll never get it if you don't say it. Can I talk to somebody? If you want a marriage, just say that's what you want. Come on. Don't be pretending. I don't want it. I could. And you know you're not good. If you if you don't say it, you won't get it. One of the things I observe with relationships is that a lot of times people say, I want to divorce. But it's a lie. Let me expose the thing. Do I have permission in the house? The divorce is not what you really want. You want your spouse to change. Because if he changes, if she changes, you're going to be happy like papi. Talk to me. But, 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 but you see, we're not honest. We say things that we don't mean. I, I, and listen, if you want change, that's what you should say. By next year, by this time, next year, my marriage is going to be better. By this time, next year, I'm going to have my five-bedroom house. By this time, next year, I'm going to be a doctor. By this occupation. By this time, next year, I'm going to be driving my Mercedes Benz. By this time, next year, I'm going to have my contract signed. By this time, next year, I'm going to have twins. By this time, next year, I'm going to be pushing my stroller. Uh, by this time, next year, I'm going to have me my ring. By this time, next year, I'm going to be above and not beneath. By this time next year, I'm going to be walking in favor. The favor of the Lord will manifest in my life in a tangible and in a visible way. By this time next year. Be honest. Because what you say is what will come your way. So here's the thing. Let me pull this in. A prophetic decree is something that you declare. 
Hmm? Job said, you will decree a thing. You means you. And that's all. You means you will decree it. I'm going somewhere deeper with this. Listen to me. Listen to me. It is only when you decree the thing that you activate the spiritual supernatural realm. Angels, <laughs> you ain't hearing me. I say angels are on standby waiting for your word that comes out of your mouth to take it and execute it. And you in there talking all kinds of stupid. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Stop it, stop it. Begin to open up your mouth and begin to give the angels a assignment. Give them some work to do. God himself is waiting on you to say what he has said concerning you. And when you say what he has said concerning you, then he goes to work on your behalf. I'm going to show you that in the word in a minute. How could a nation go from zero to overflow? How could the nation's economy go from minus to plus with nothing coming in and nothing going out? What would make the prophet make such a decree? Huh? Listen, you have to understand the power of prophetic declarations. One of the reasons we don't make them is because we seek to add reason and logic. It don't make sense to us. Huh? And because before we even utter the word, we have already reasoned it out. Talk to me. That's why when we do school of the prophets and we teach you to flow prophetically, I say to you, speak fast. Because you need to speak faster than your mind is thinking. Because if you are thinking, a lot of the things you say, you will not say it. Are you with me? <laughs> the prophetic word must bypass your ability to reason. Because you will reason it away. You will reason it out. And you will not say what you are sensing in your spirit. Glory to God. They move from nothing to excess. Lift your hands. From nothing to excess. From minus to plus, my God. Overnight. I don't know what you need to happen in your life. But I don't think the Lord allowed me to bring this word. And something that happened for you overnight. Within the next 24 hours. I don't believe as a prophet of God. God put this word in my spirit. Just for me to give a nice teaching. And something that will shift for you. Something that will change for you. Something that will get better for you. In the next 24 hours. I prophesy over your life that you are going to shift up. You are going to move from little. Something in your life that little will become a lot. I said something in your life ah, that's a little will begin to increase. There is a prophetic word of increase that is moving towards you and you better receive it now. Don't wonder how is it going to happen. Oh my God, within 24 hours, your wife is showing up. Within the next 20, this is for somebody. Your husband is calling. Mapakoteba, rapapapa, matabo shata. You better go home and watch your phone. And say, brapapo chetepo, chetepapapa. Wait for the phone to ring my papa pocket because when the phone rings, it's gonna be the one. 
You are in the realm of the spirit, not in the realm of the flesh. Tell your neighbor you are in the realm of the spirit, not in the realm of the flesh. When they feel something in your spirit, I don't want, I don't, I don't have to know how it's going to come to pass. That's not my business. I don't have to figure it out. That's not my business. My job is just to sense it, to hear it, and speak it, and I speak it over you. That thing will be established for you. I said it will be es Oh, you didn't hear me. I said within the next 24 hours, it will be established. That business idea will be established. That business will be established. That, that, that word will be established. That promotion will be established. I've come to prophesy to somebody that joy that you've been back and forth, it will be established. Uh, that peace that's been uh, uh, eluding you, it will be established. Within the next 24 hours, that thing will be established. I say that relationship relationship will be established within the next 24 hours your anointing will be established it will be established your eyes the opening of your eyes will be established your ears within the next 24 hours your spiritual ears about to pop open you're about to hear things from the realm of the spirit like you have never heard before and it will be established you're about to see you're about to see you're about to see like you've never seen before and it will be established. You're about to open your mouth and words are going to come. Revelation, divine revelation is coming to you and it will be established. You're going to decree a thing and it will be established. Hey, Somebody say establish it. Let it be established, my life. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Whatever you decree will happen for you. Let me go a little deeper. Are you ready? Do you want it? People can decree all kinds of things over you. Yeah? But let me tell you something. And if you get nothing today, get this. The key to decree is you. You decreeing over your own life. That is the key. That is the word. You decree it. So how do we work this thing? Huh? Pastor C taught us something a so, couple of years ago about decreeing, de declaring the decree. How many do you remember? So here's the thing. When someone decrees a thing over your life, you have to now take that decree and declare it. So if I declare, watch this now, if I declare that within the next 24 hours, your wife is showing up, then you have to now say, I declare that within the next 24 hours, my wife will show up. And when you decree it, that's when it happens. If I declare over you that within the next 24 hours, your husband will show up, he's going to call. You have to now say, Amen, Amen, Amen. And I declare that within the next 24 hours, my husband, my phone will ring. I decree it. My phone will ring. I decree it. If I declare over you, within the next seven days, your boss is going to call you. I'm back at the bro shutter. And there's going to be a promotion on the table for you. You have to say, let it be according to your word. I declare that I will be called into my boss's office. And I will receive papers, documentation, word of my promotion. I declare the decree. Tell your neighbor, I declare it. I declare the decree. Whatever anybody decrees over your life, you have to take it. And you have to know, declare the decree because it is what you say will happen for you that is why people could talk all kinds of nonsense about you and it have no effect on you the only way 
it affects you. Here's, here's how we do. Sister Sue said that I am a liar. You just declared. You just declared the decree that Sister Sue placed over your life. That's why it affects you. That's why it affects you. That's why it manifests in your life. Because you are declaring what people are saying, all the foolish things that people are saying concerning you. Listen, I ain't got time with that. <laughs> that got nothing to do with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. This year is a year of compliments only. <laughs> Tell your neighbor this year is a year for compliments only. <laughs> if it ain't good, just bypass me. I ain't got time. We ain't got time. Listen, listen. What it is what you say. Not what they say. And if, listen to me, if anybody says anything that you are not in agreement with, just don't repeat it. Are you getting it? Just don't repeat it. What you repeat is what you're in agreement with. So somebody decrees over your life that you will prosper in your physical body you say i declare that decree I, I, I will prosper i will prosper i will prosper why because when you speak prophetically when you decree and declare what you want to happen there are spiritual agents that take that word that take that decree and bring it to pass the centurion came to jesus I, and his servant was sick and Jesus was going to his house to heal the servant. The centurion said, no, 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 no. Just what? Just speak the word. Just, just make a decree and my servant will be healed. In other words, if Jesus said, your servant will be healed, the centurion said, yes, my servant will be healed. Amen. My servant will be healed. And the very same hour. Oh, there's another revelation for you. When the decree is spoken, you repeat it, you declare it at the same time. At the same time. Because words work like that at the very same hour. The very hour Jesus decreed it. The very hour Jesus spoke it. Ah, it came to pass in the servant's life. He was healed. Are you with me? Are you with me? Some people don't have jobs today. Because of the words they have spoken. Some people don't have a relationship today. Because of the words they have spoken. Some people have lost friends. They've lost family members. Because of the words they have spoken. Let me tell you, so you have to learn how to bless yourself. Learn how to bless yourself. It's good when other people bless you, but learn how to bless yourself. Hallelujah. Whenever people bless you, it's not enough. You have to take that and bless yourself. Are you with me? Whenever people curse you, it's not enough. You have to bless yourself when they curse you. When they say you're not going to make it, you say the blood of Jesus. The devil is a liar. I'm going to make it. When they say that you're not going to come up because what they thought of, uh, uh, that the enemy gave to you would take you out. Ah, uh, you say, no, 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 no. The devil is a liar. I may be dumb, but I'm the righteous. And the righteous falls, but the Lord delivers him. The Lord raises him up every time. And since I'm the righteous one, I'm going to rise up. I'm going to walk again. Let me tell you something. You have to open your mouth and say wonderful things about yourself. And stop complaining about the nasty things that people say about you. Glory to Jesus. It's not what they say about you. It's what you are saying about yourself. Glory to God. Decree things about your debt. Huh? Decree. Take them and decree over there. By this time. Take each credit card bill. One at a time. Makato Bosha. Yila Maka Sunday. And decree. By this time. Next year you will be done. By this time. Next year you will be done. By this time. next. And listen. In three years you're done. Debt free. Come on. Tell anybody debt free. 
death free by your decree come on you can speak to your health you can start decreeing because once you open up your mouth and you begin to decree you activate the spiritual realm you activate the unseen realm to release unseen agents to work on your behalf suddenly you couldn't stop drinking ice cream at 12 at eating ice cream at 12 at night you couldn't stop drinking soda coca-cola ah ah you drank three cans every day ah and and the doctor gave you a negative report the doctor said you are borderline diabetes ah, ah, and you begin to decree because you heard a word like this and something dropped in your spirit and you begin to decree all of a sudden you find you could say no to coca-cola why because by your decree our divine agents were activated to help you overcome that craving, help you overcome uh, 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 that addiction. Uh, am I talking to anybody? Anything you're struggling with, you can decree it and get success because when you decree, you invite God to help you. Uh, decrees, uh, our prophetic decrees are made by faith. They are not just words that we speak. They are words that are inspired by the Holy Ghost. They are words that find their root and their foundation and their basis in the word of God. So when you speak it by faith in the midst of a helpless and a hopeless situation, you dare to stand and say, by this time tomorrow, because you use words of faith, you activate the power of God and you bring it to bear on your situation to cause a turnaround. I've come to announce to you that this is your season. The experience incredible. Turnarounds. Turnarounds. I say it is your time. No wonder it's hard because the harder it is, the bigger, the greater, the sweeter, the breakthrough. You're going to dance again. You are going to shout again. You are going to rejoice again. You are going to sing again. Yeah, you're going to be happy again. You're going to speak again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't wait for your miracle to happen before you start talking. Declare the word so that the miracle can happen. Amen? Declare it so that the miracle can happen. Don't wait to see the doctor's report for you to say, I am healed. Talk to me. While they're drawing the blood, while they're taking the MRI, while they're doing the x-ray, while they're doing the sonogram, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. I decree it. Hallelujah. Listen to me, church. Speak the word. Don't wait for validation. Speak the word. Don't wait for approval. Don't wait for the clouds to roll back. <laughs> for you prophesy that it's going to be a bright, bright, bright sunny day. Are you with me? I want you to get this because it can change your life. Hallelujah. In the midst of the darkness, you're going to prophesy that there is light. In the midst of the sorrow, you're going to decree and declare that there is joy. In the midst of the pain, in the midst of the confusion, you're going to decree and declare that there is peace. Peace. Because that's what you want to happen. Your prophetic word changes the situation. So stand. I'm going to decree some things over your life. And you know what you have to do. Are you here? Facebook, are you here? Zoom, are you here? Expect them to happen. It happened. For Elisha and, and Samaria. Expect them to happen. Whatever. We have a saying that we say. If the cap fits. Yeah. What's yours is yours. 
I prophesied to hundreds, even thousands of people today. I decree over your lives that by the stripes of Jesus, I decree you are healed. I decree that you will walk in good health. And even as your soul is healthy, you will be healthy. I decree that God will satisfy you with long, healthy life. And you will be saved to the end. I decree it over your lives. I decree that as the days of a tree, so will your days be. Ah, I decree that God is providing and supplying all of your needs according to his riches. I decree you will lack nothing. I decree that everything is working out for your good. I decree over your lives that the hearts of people are turning and working for your favor. I decree that favor will find you. Even people that don't like you. I decree they will favor you. I decree because the Lord is your shepherd. You will lack for nothing that you're going out of and you're coming in will be blessed. That you're going out of and you're coming in will be blessed. I decree over your lives that whatsoever you put your hands to, they will prosper. They will prosper. Your businesses will prosper. Your children will prosper. Your family will prosper. Your groups will prosper. I decree. I I decree that you, your wife, will be a fruitful vine. I decree that your wife will bring forth children, the fruit of the womb, and they will be like olive shoots round about your table. I decree over your life. I decree that you will be a lender and not a borrower. Because you dwell in the presence of the Lord. That blessings after blessings after blessing will come to you and will manifest in you and prophesy and decree over you that wherever God wants you to go you will go and nothing or nobody will be able to stop you and decree you are a blessing in your generation you are a blessing in your generation you are a blessing in your generation and your children will call you blessed they will grow in the knowledge and in the power of God, I decree over your lives. I decree it. I decree it. I decree it. I decree over your lives. Glory to God.